Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about the um, the YPVS, the Yamaha power valve system. We'll start with this one because this was the first one. And um, we'll quickly just run through. Um, I'm going to do it backwards in a sense. I'm going to run through how it works, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like and how it all goes together. Fucking wind. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got a, a two-stroke cylinder, exhaust port, uh, transfer and boost ports and all those things, and your piston. This is a bottom dead centre, just sits out of the way, you can see what's going on. So before I spoke about um, uh, your exhaust length and how long it takes that uh, pressure wave to get all the way down to your uh, reflector cone and then come all the way back up, and that it's all about timing and it's quite important. Um, in the two strokes a shite video I talked about volumetric efficiency and so on and so forth so now we're going to kind of bring them two videos together and we are going to see how Yamaha and others in the future obviously with other videos how they got around some of these issues or how they tried to improve the shortfall of the two stroke so all this is basically it is just a drum it's a drum with a bit missing out of it, and they called it the cotton reel, you know, a cotton, cotton bobbin type jobby, you know, so uh, this shape kind of thing, which is, yeah, pretty much it's quite accurate, is that really? It's a good uh, thing. Now, it is, um, it has to be said that Yamaha didn't just use this um, rotating drum power valve system, they did also use a guillotine system, which I will. I won't go into this video because that some of the other motorcycles used, uh, like Kawasaki and stuff, used similar type of systems like that. Um, so I'll just, on the back of them videos, I'll just say, and Yamaha did something very similar to this. But basically, the, um, the YPVS is any kind of um, power valve system, an exhaust uh, port control system that Yamaha uses. So their guillotine version was also known as a YPVS. But let's, let's stop fucking around and let's see you know what the crack is. Now you might see your picture like this, but you won't see this tail sticking out. You think, well, hang about what's going on because the piston's going to clap that. Because they, I've added this to um, give you the sense that uh, there's a cutaway on the actual drum that wraps around the cylinder. So even though, yes, it doesn't look like this in a, a cross section, um, this is how the whole valve it wraps around, and I'll make more sense of that in a second. But basically what happens is, is at low RPM, this is the, what we call the closed section. And at low RPM, um, uh, two strokes, because their exhaust is tuned for uh, to be more in the power band, it, where peak power is produced, um, the system falls really short. You, even no you notice even more uh, with a two stroke. So if you have your exhaust that sits right in the middle of the power band, so... Let's just say, there's your, your power band kind of like this, and you have your exhaust sit in this range here, in this part of the band, then, and then you use a um, an exhaust, because you don't have to use exhaust for two strokes, but you use an exhaust to increase this area, you know, you have your exhaust tuned to that specific RPM, then it, as, um, you know, as humans, we perceive that this is even worse you know what I mean? It hasn't changed, it's just that peak power is even peakier, so to speak. But we, um, you know, we'll feel it as, yes, the bike's nice and fast, but my God, in, you know, in relation to where you're on the power band, low down, it's fucking terrible, you know what I mean? And it would give the bike bad rap, in a sense. So, to alleviate this, they made the power valve system. So, the power valve system works on two principles. The exhaust is tuned for high RPM, like I said, where peak power is. And at lower RPM, the volumetric efficiency failures or the um, really low volumetric efficiency of a two-stroke is um, mainly due to when the piston descends, when the uh, exhaust port opens, it opens, in a sense, too early. So you need to be able to adjust that. And that's exactly what the power valve system does, is it's... Instead of having the valve, we'll get a better colour. Instead of having the exhaust valve here, and you would open here, because this valve section is closed, it's basically like a window. 
because it's closed, you now open here. So this was, um, just say this is regular, uh, regular. This is what it used to be, and then this is the power valve. Um, this is the power valve setting. So when you're at low RPM, um, the power valve is what we call closed. So basically the piston has to descend further before the exhaust gases can get out, which means that your, 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 your cylinder is sealed for longer, which means obviously that the actual amount of power that you get out of that. And the reverse is true on the other side. When the piston comes up, it means that the piston, um, uh, the cylinder closes earlier, which means that you can r maintain more of your exhaust gases in your cylinder to get better compression. So your compression ratio, your, your compression pressures will be higher. So the problem with, with having it in this, um, you know, you say, well, why don't you just have your regular ports just this low? If this increases volumetric efficiency and all the rest of it, why don't you just have it low like this? Well, the problem comes then that when you are going quite fast, your uh, piston descends, the exhaust gases go out, the exhaust gases reflect back, and it's too late. The piston's already come back up again. So what you then need to do is you need to then heighten the port, and we do that by rotating this drum. I'll just do this on off camera and then I'll get back to you. So I've left the line on where our port used to be, that's where the nose of the port used to be. Um, the power valve, this nose was down here. So all we've done is we've rotated it that um, counterclockwise in this diagram. So this is where our port used to be at low RPM. And low RPM is between, I think it's three and four, three and four thousand RPM. That's where the power valve sits, and as you start to increase speed, the power valve starts to open. So it's RPM dependent because the RPM, because uh, like I said, we're all trying. What we're trying to do here with the ex uh, the exhaust pulses in the exhaust is beat the piston or make sure that we push everything that's escaped into the exhaust back in. And it's again, it's a race against the piston basically. So the faster the RPM, obviously, the faster the pistons go in, um, you know, per minute, and obviously we need to try and um, we can't really speed up the exhaust uh, pressure wave because the limitations like the speed of sound and the temperature and the density of the medium, the gas inside the exhaust, and because we don't have variable exhaust because it's a fixed exhaust, the only thing we can do is kind of like leave the foot or leave the uh, you know a foot in the door. It's like it's like running out of an elevator, quickly running to the office, grab something and running back before the elevator doors closed, uh, before the elevator closed, doors closed, fucking hell. And basically what happens is, is your power valve is your mate just sticking it, sticking his foot in the door going, ah, I've got it for you mate, you're all right. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that, it's just that, that little helping friend that basically leaves the elevator doors open, uh, leaves the elevator doors open for you so you can get in. That's kind of, and you're, the charge that's gone out into the office, or the fresh charge that's gone out into the exhaust, and you're trying to nip back in before that, you know, before that elevator door closes. The problem is, is that the the piston, um, and it's like the elevator doors, you know, it takes, they open and they wait five seconds, but now they're getting quicker and quicker and quicker, and you've got to either run faster, which the gases really can't, or you need a dude there with his foot in the door. It's not a bad explanation. <laughs> Just thought of it. Any road. So when you go to um, higher RPM, then the, the, the valve starts to open, and then your port height is now up here. So this is, uh, we'll just call this uh, high RPM. RPM. So now what happens is, is, like I say, it's just opening the door in a sense for you. So when the exhaust gases come out, now the piston. Let's just imagine before it used to cut off here, now the piston's here, which would have normally closed off that valve, and now the exhaust gases can just nip in at the last minute. So at slow RPM, the piston is here when the exhaust gases arrive, and now we're at higher RPM, it's still here, and we can just nip in because it's all about time. It's how quick the piston's going versus how far and how quick the exhaust gases can get back to push the fresh mixture and blah 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 in. So now we've had a look at the basic principles of it, let's have a look at the actual power valve itself and what you know its parts and what it entails 
you know, what it's made out of. So, the actual valve itself, um, I had that little lip that cuts in, because when you look from above, like so, so this is looking down your cylinder, um, your drum, like I say, it's like a cotton reel, or like they, they describe it, it's like, you know, that's fucking shit. Jesus Christ. It was going all, all right and then it went all tits up at the bottom, at the top even. So you can see how it's, you know, it's like a, a, a tumbler. So obviously when you look from this side, you know, if you do a cross section here, you will have power valve, cylinder wall, port and cylinder. But I was trying to demonstrate the fact that it does actually overhang. So if you look at this bit, it's just, you know, it's just to it's just to show you the end because if you actually did take a cross section, uh, yeah. But anyway, so all it does is it's a valve that has this. Um, it's not only that; is it's also a scallop. So even though it goes thinner in the middle there, so we'll call that A. That's A. This bit's B. So this bit's B. It also has a scallop out of it there. And in a sense, that was this tri um, uh, semicircle section. And basically, that's all it does is it just rotates around this point in the middle. So just say that's your middle, and it just rotates around that. So how does it actually work? Well, um, there's two ways that they they work. The YZ had a um, speed governor, which is basically weights and a spring. Uh, you'll see that more in the kip system because I've got some actual footage of the real thing. Um, but basically all you have is it's a cylinder, you have your weird cotton thing. Let's see if I can get this right. It's basically like that. It has a bearing, a bushing pack here with some seals in it and some bearings like that. And then on this end of the shaft, it has an actuation. It's basically a bolt with a lever on it. And most of the uh, systems were controlled, or the more modern systems are controlled by a servo motor and a load of cables. So if you look at your cylinder, you'll have you know, your, your cylinder with all this gubbins on, and then you'll have your cap and your spark plug and all that shite. And on the side here, you'll have a drum and it'll have two wires coming out of it. And basically all the servo motor does further up is just pull them wires backwards and forwards to open and close it. And like I say, the servo motor takes, uh, takes its, um, of, of what degree it should open and close, it takes that from your RPM from your CDI usually, but um, some other systems may vary. The ones I've seen, they use the CDI. So basically it's just your, your spark firing as your timing of uh, you know, it's just, that's what it uses to measure your RPM, and the servo motor adjusts the angle from preset instructions of what angle it should be at what RPM. So um, I hope that makes sense. You know what I mean? We're going to do the kip system and the AV blah blah blah, whatever it's bloody called from Suzuki and Honda and what have you. We'll do you know most of them. Like I say, um, Yamaha do did use the, what we call the guillotine version in other models, but it was still called this. But I'll show you that more in the Kawasaki one because it's very related to it in a sense. This is a bit different. Um, this is the nicer one, I would say, out of all of them. Um, you know, Kawasaki, uh, Yamaha probably looked at loads of different ones. And then obviously because this is quite simple, um, it's quite robust really. Apart from it clogging up the carbon, but that's going to happen no matter what you do. Um, it's quite a good system. They patented the shit out of that one, and then all the other manufacturers were left with the shitty, the shittier versions of doing it, like the guillotine and the trapdoor and all these other versions and weird stuff. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.